Today's topic, someone sent me this from a YouTuber who's all the way out in Korea, Megan Moon. So as we know, Korea is very different from my home country of the USA, America. And through marriage, I've also learned a little bit more about some differences that we have and the way that we view relationships and the way that we go about them, etc. So I thought I would talk today about some things that I learned from being married here in Korea. The very first thing that I learned was that marriage is duty. And it's quite different from like kind of what we see like in the Hollywood and in media and stuff. One. Yeah. And that's actually why most of marriages fail. You think it's just, it gets better after you get married. You're just gonna cruise there and everything gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm married now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you realize you got some work to do. The word duty is an interesting one. How do you define duty? It's work that you gotta do. Interesting. Yeah, it's the work that you got to do in, in, in order to maintain something. It's a duty. And you get into this thing with someone else. You have a duty. The other person has a duty. You sign them up. You have a duty to make it work. A moral or legal obligation, a responsibility. Now, people you, hear obligation when it comes to things like marriages and they're like, there should be no obligations in relationships. You signed the papers for what, boo-boo? You made the vows. You you made the vows. You signed the pay. You signed the paper. There was a priest involved, a pastor. There was there was witnesses. You got two witnesses. You got uh, on on both sides. You come on now. I'm, I'm no, not mad at you. I'm not no, mad at you. No, hey, hey. You but, think? I, and after that, you got all this shit going on. You have the same. You have the same elements. You have the same motherfuckers elements as when you go to court. You got someone that prosecutes. You got witnesses. You got the signed motherfucker paper, and you got your sentence for life. And then you think there's not gonna be work, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and, and by the way, bitch, I, I when, I, when, appreciate. When, when I say bitch, I'm not talking to you, Megan. I don't know you. But, no, no, Megan, do your thing, girl. Do your thing. It's not. It's not you. I'm just talking in general. Yeah, let her preach. She, she, she. Let her preach. Yeah, <laughs> go on, Megan. Go on, Megan. And I feel like kind of our view of marriage like in America is a bit more romanticized. It's like this romantical kind of Disney kind of fairy tale type thing that we like view with marriage. I feel like sometimes we lose a lot of the duty and a lot of people in marriage just think about, you know, the things that they want to get. Like I want to get married so I can get this and I can get that and I can have love and happiness and stuff like that. But I notice in a lot of Asian countries like they view marriage as duty. Of course, you know, people love each other like when they get married. but. There's more of an aspect on the things that you need to contribute and things that you need to do in the relationship to keep it afloat. And I notice when people think of marriage here, they think less about, okay, what am I gonna be getting? Like, give to me, give to me. And there's less of this sort of entitled feeling for what you think you should be getting in marriage. Everybody thinks that mar marriage is like 50-50. You hear that often. It's not 50-50. It's 100-100. You give 100% of you, I give 100% of me. It's not 50-50. It's not. That's a lie. That's a whole lot of lie. And whenever sometimes I'm going to be at 90%, you're going to give 110. Or even sometimes 120. <laughs> Motherfuckers think it's 50-50. It's not. And people tend to focus on how they can make it work and the things that they need to do within that marriage. And one thing that I noticed is instead of people getting their happiness from what they're getting, like I'm happy when my partner's just doing this for me or when I'm getting this love or when I'm getting the things I feel like I'm entitled to get, is people feel more happiness in knowing that they fulfilled their duty in marriage. We moved. We moved to the condo, right? You should have you seen my chest. You should have seen- well, No, 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 no. You need to take this 10 steps back to give the context of why that move was a big deal. I know why. They won't understand. So you need to explain a little bit about the financial situation prior and what it meant for you to contribute so that they can get the full picture of why your chest was like this. Because I remember, nigga, you came in one day and your head was like this. I was like, what happened? I was like, you turned into a Final Fantasy character. But... So I need to un so 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 give them everything, please. I'm gonna tell you this, all right? For the first few for your first few years of our lives, uh, to, I was making more money than her because she was in school. Mm. I, I decided to say, "Fuck this college shit. Mm. I'm out. I'm gonna go in the world and work." She went to school, did her thing. She applied in a job, and it went good. 
first few years, I was making more bucks and more bank than her. Mm -hmm. I was switching jobs and stuff like that. And then she gets promotions, mm -hmm. promotions, promotions. At some point, motherfuckers was asking me, so what does your girl do? And I was like, nigga, I don't know. You know why? Because I don't need to know because she's going about to get a promotion in fucking three weeks. So, I, <laughs> so fuck knowing what she does. She always fucking switches on me. Mm -hmm. Fuck that shit. And at some point, for the good part of our life, she was making two to three times my bread. Mm. So, since I'm not the bread breadwinner, now I gotta I gotta cope with other shit. Mm -hmm. I gotta fix shit. Mm -hmm. I gotta, you know, I gotta I gotta. Sometimes you I would get, do, do I, I, I gotta do some shit. She had, Long hours, so whenever she would come back home, I'd have to make the dinner, like, get the, you know what I mean? To hold my own. I had to bring my 100%. Right. Right. Because she was bringing her 100%. Right. You know what I mean? And then, this shit happens. We doing good. We doing great. She able to buy the condo, but then I'm able to, I'm able to, to get back to be like, nah, put it on the card. Nah, I got this. <laughs> you saw how I said <laughs> You saw You saw how I said <laughs> if, te if you see Preacher's bottom teeth In a smile That's some real shit <laughs> Oh no put it on the card I got this So it felt good for you To be yeah. able to provide The space yeah, that you guys Were gonna yeah, live in yeah, It felt but, like you were able To fulfill your duty Yeah but like yeah Duty, that's the thing. And I was, but it's just, huh, I just gotta, I got I, I got this goal, I gotta, you know. Mm -hmm. And I still feel like I got a whole, I, I owe her, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it, because all those years she had my back, I gotta get back on it. That's you know my I mean? turn, let me that's handle it. That's my turn, let me, let me handle it, we there, and it's really. And that's the, the fulfilling part for you? Yeah, well, I mean, just, just, to, just to just be able to, you know, mm -hmm. hey, okay, you, you know whenever yeah. you're in debt to somebody, and that's not really what it is, but imagine that you're in debt, imagine you're debt to somebody, and you're finally able to pay it. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I'm talking about respectfully, not throwing in someone's face. I'm talking about like, yeah, here you go. And then you add interest and you're like, yeah, we good. And then cool, I got you. Getting someone's back. After they had yours. After they had yours. You pay some shit to your parents and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, this pandemic is happening. And I was talking to my mom. I was like, yo, you motherfuckers are going to go to Miami this year? It's like, oh, we don't know because we can only fly. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to fly you there. I'll fly you. Both both of you. I'll fly you there. First class. Yeah, but what about the car? We can't rent a car. I'll send it there. Send me the bill. <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a duty. So whether it is with your wife, whether it is with your parents, whether it was with my sister, I got my sister's back. Do you know what I mean? So that's what it is. And I think that's something that's actually really nice because you can't really control what other people do, right? You can't control like if someone's gonna do something for you that day, but you can control the things that you're doing. And I think when your happiness comes from a sense of fulfillment for doing the things that you're supposed to do to keep the marriage running, then I feel like that leads to much longer happiness as opposed to just what can I get, what can I get, what can I get? Can I just take a second to appreciate how wise that was? She said, if your sense of fulfillment and enjoy comes from what they do for you, then it's kind of out of your control. Whereas when you get joy and pleasure from being able to give others, and it's always something you can choose to do each day. So there's something that's very nice about it. Oh, that. no, Megan, isn't, Megan is on point. Yes. She's spinning game yeah, right now. Yeah, we wasn't talking shit about your wife, Mr. Moon. We showing her some love. Yo, yo, Megan, Megan's spitting some sense right now. Yeah. So let's compare like marriage to like a business or something, right? <clears throat> so for a business to run well, the employee should always be doing their job. If the boss said, you know what, you can just work when you feel like it, and everyone only worked when they felt like it instead of what you have to do every day, then the business might not go so well. And so I feel like uh, with marriage, it's similar. Like you don't always feel like doing things that you're supposed to do all the time, but that's just kind of part of it. And this is just a very light example. It's the only thing that just kind of popped into my head right now, but this is not something that Moon said 
I need you to get me my coffee every day. <laughs> but it's just kind of something that I like to do in the morning is to make Mr. Moon coffee. Sometimes I don't feel like getting his cafe latte in the morning, but I know it makes him happy and it makes, it keeps our marriage going. And when he sees that I'm getting up to get him his cafe latte, even if I want to be sleeping in, it makes him happy too. It makes him want to keep doing things, you know, for me. So we just keep giving to each other and each other and each other and we continue to like thrive in that way. I did, that's my girl, bought her a coffee, a, a coffee machine. She likes espresso in the, in the morning. No, she likes a coffee latte. And for three months, the first three months, I was getting up. I didn't have to get up. She wakes up at six, five, six in the morning. I wake up to get, get her coffee. But, 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 whenever she's in the kitchen, she's like, yo, I'm playing PlayStation. She's like, yeah, you want a sandwich? Hell yeah, I want a sandwich. I'm not, yo, go in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. No, I don't have to ask. I don't have to ask. You know why? Because I give her coffee because she don't have to ask. The motherfuckers that have to ask their wife to make them a sandwich, y'all losing to me. That's that's an L to me. I don't even have to ask because she don't even have to ask for the coffee. I'm not even saying I'm perfect. I think, man, But it's a, it's a dynamic. Guys, let me know in the comments below. But is this not the video in which preach is preached the most? It just may be. My nigga's going in. I mean, Mrs. Moon is going in as well. Yo, Moon, yo. But, 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 but Preach is also going I'm in as well. Saying, Preach, Moon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody's just like, and then I go in. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. <laughs> no, but, but it, that's the thing. That's it. The people, yo, if that. you have to tell your wife, and there was a whole thing with the meme world. You know how I am with me. There's a whole thing about, yo, go in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. Yeah, okay. Honest to the joke and everything and stuff. But if you have to ask, let me just say, I, one thing that I think she said that was very mature, like, she says, some days I don't want to do it, mm -hmm. but I still do it. And do that's it. the truth about relationships. Yo. Sometimes you don't really feel like it, but it's still your duty to do it. And the other person's also supposed to reciprocate in that way as well. You know, this whole idea of like, only when you want to, enthusiastic. No. Sometimes you don't want to get up to go to the gym. Shut the but fuck up and go. But sometimes you still have the duty to go. You still have that responsibility. That's it. You yo, gotta manage yourself. Yo, bust a blank one time for me for Miss, Miss Moon. Boom, boom. Yo, bust a blank. You know boom. I mean? How many right. times do you think that man wants to go to the hospital? Zero. But he has a duty when he's in a marriage to go to the hospital. Why? Because he has to manage his health to be around. We all have to do shit we don't want to do. And another thing that I noticed is those feelings of love tend to stay and continue to happen when both people are fulfilling their role and doing their duties in the marriage. Things work out that you put effort into. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope it did. Take from it what you want. So the next thing that I've kind of learned to do here is I've really learned to embrace the differences between men and women. I feel like sometimes in the West, we like to ignore that there are differences between men and women, but I feel like here in Korea, people understand that there are differences and it doesn't mean that one is better than the other, but they don't demonize any characteristics that are inherently masculine or feminine. My girl, my girl to this day, we had the conversation the other day, me and my girl. I said to my girl, and it's not to diss anybody. It's really not. It's really not. It's really not. I asked my girl, are you a feminist? My girl said no. And I'm like, why? Don't don't you don't you want to be equal? I'm like, we are equal. But I ain't putting out the goddamn garbage. That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> That's your role. And I went, that's my job. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. We, we equal. We good, good. But, but I got... ain't putting out the goddamn go garbage. <laughs> that's your role. I like that. <laughs> people allow for people to play to their strengths, especially in relationships. And I think that's something that's really nice. And the beauty of it is you're not necessarily bound to the expectations that people have of this is man and this is woman. Society is not saying you must have traditional gender roles. But if you want to do that, people don't seem to demonize you where I feel like sometimes in the West now, I mean, I was like that. Like I remember 
when I was in high school about to go to college, I had a friend and all she wanted to do was just get married and have kids. And she wanted to have a lot of kids. So she did that right out of high school. I remember kind of judging her like, ew, why would you do that? You have no ambition. So then I kind of like really stopped talking to her because I thought, oh my God, what is that? Like, why would you just want to do that? And like live with a man who makes the money and do that, like be independent, have some ambition and stuff. Like that was kind of, how I used to think about women who wanted to do that, but one thing that Korea has taught me is that, you know, everyone like chooses what they want to do. If a woman wants to take on a traditional role and that's what she wants to do, then we shouldn't tell her she's wrong for wanting to do that. You know, I think we should be able to choose what we want to do and people shouldn't look down on people who want to do those traditional roles in that way. I used to be one of those people who looked down on women like that as I was going to college, getting my degree that I'm not using at all in debt, not anymore, but was in debt. She ain't got no debt and she got like four kids and she's happy, I see her on Instagram, so. Oh, and growing up too, like my parents were always like, yeah, be independent, do this. Like, don't depend on no man, don't need no man. And now that I'm married, I'm like, I needed him. Where have you been, Mr. Moon? <laughs> okay, where have you been? Like, why didn't I meet you? No, if I had met him when I was 22, he might not have liked me because Mr. Moon, my husband, he likes to feel like needed. And at that time I was kind of like anti anything. Like I don't need no help, no man. Mr. Moon, he loves like carrying things and like doing things and just being helpful. And I think in the past, like old Megan would have thought like, oh, it's because he thinks I can't do it. I can do pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, 20 pounds strapped to me. I can do a pull-up. I don't need you to carry my bags. Why, why she, why, why she turned, why, why did Megan turn into Cardi. <laughs> because that's probably how she was in college. <laughs> oh, see, I don't need that. The thing that happened is like, like I'm gonna tell you, okay, I can. But yeah, now I'm like, yeah, I could do it. But one thing that I've noticed about men, one of those inherent traits that men have is they like to feel needed and to feel as though they're helpful and they're contributing is one of the things that drives them to want to do more and do better. So I noticed with Mr. Moon, I can get him to do more things, <laughs> more chores by saying, oh yeah, you know, I really need your help. The last time you did it, you did it so well. It was just so amazing. Is that we don't want a boy. We got boys already. I could chug this beer, bro. I could do, okay, I got boys to do that too. Sometimes I want a girl. Sometimes that's my shit, girls. Yeah, you could do it. I, it's not because you could do it that it's good. I could drive my car with my feet. That don't make it a good fucking idea. Who said that? Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Great video. First off, shout out to her. Um. Yeah. Listen. Anything that encourages people to take up their responsibilities and their duties and understanding that life is about work, it's about labor, then I'm always for. And, you know, to extend this past dating and marriage, I had someone who was in university asking me about potentially dropping out and what he thought. And I told them this, whatever you choose in life, understand it's going to come with its responsibilities. And there's a lot of labor that you're going to have to put in. This whole self-employed life, this whole dropping out to be an entrepreneur, it's not just you don't go to school, you don't pay no bills, you just get a job. It's like, no. There's labor that you have to do. There's hustling that you have to do. There's effort in, that you have to invest in this thing. So coming in with that mindset is going to help you understand that it's not glamorous and self, self-employed self hours and you get to work when you want to work and everything is... No, it's honestly super draining and taxing, but there's a reward to it. But you need to understand it's labor. That's what it is. Friendships, relationships, marriages, uh, work relationships, even this, it's labor. You see us laughing behind the scenes. It's a lot of labor. Mm -hmm. So anything that encourages people to understand those responsibilities, to embrace it and to see the positive in that, I am all for. So shout out to Mrs. Moon. And that was my thought on that. What did you want? To people say? have thought about, oh, uh, do a job that you like and you'll never work a day in your life. That is the worst bullshit I've heard. The real saying is not that. The real saying is get a job you love and you don't know when you'll stop. <laughs> you'll always be working. That's really what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no schedules to this bitch. Yeah, the dream job is not the fact that there's like an absence of labor. There's not an absence of work. Mm -mm. There's no dream job. There's no job where you don't have to do shit you don't want to do. You want to be a YouTuber? Bitch, you better learn how to edit. 
Bitch, you better learn how to do a lot of these other things because what it takes to get into this is a lot of labor that you probably don't want to do. I met a single motherfucker who does this job who loves every aspect of it. It's not possible. You want to run a successful automobile company? Bitch, you better learn about business. You might love cars, but business is a whole other ballgame and most people don't like that. Even NFL players, they might love football. The business, they don't always love. Mm. The fans, the media, they don't always love. Everything comes with its share of labor that you cannot get out of. Ask my Sean Lynch what he don't like about. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes you have to do that. So I'm just here so I just don't get fined. Next question. Yeah, that is I'm what marriage is sometimes. I, I'm, just, I'm just here so I just don't get fined. Yeah, <laughs> that is what a marriage is. What would they put? I'm just here just so I just you don't want get the fined. skittles? <laughs> don't get fined. <laughs> That's really <laughs> Yes. And I think young men, young women want to hear this kind of message. I think they understand this intrinsically. They just don't understand it's a good thing. So, yeah. I wanted to put this out and shout out to her. I really appreciate what she had to say. Anything else? Nah, man. All right. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, leave a little like and a little comment. All right? Just write comment. Algorithm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. She's good.